Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just broke down some of the players that just have to have big fall camps. They have to go into the season with a lot of confidence. A couple quarterbacks on that list, including Cade Klubnik and DJU, they're absolutely going to have to have huge camps and go in with a ton of confidence into week one because they don't necessarily have the easiest matchups going into week one or week zero for Florida State. But let's get into some fall camp intel. There is so much going on all around the country and the updates just keep rolling in. So I'm trying to keep you as updated as I can and We'll start over in Nebraska. Although that is a Wake Forest jersey, we are going to start in Nebraska. Jamal Banks came over from Wake Forest and seems to be the wide receiver one over in Lincoln as at this moment. And frankly, they need one. I think they have a very talented wide receiver core. I think they need a guy that Dylan Wilder can look at, see his number, and say, that's where I'm going with the football. So that is going to help him a ton if Jamal Banks can solidify himself as the number one guy. And then you have a guy like Jalen Lloyd that is such a danger down the field. You have Isaiah Nayer who has a catch rate that is absolutely ridiculous you have a really fun wide receiver group but you're gonna need that go-to guy it sounds like Jamal Banks at least early on in fall camp is becoming that guy for Dylan Raiola and then Keona Davis is someone that's making a ton of noise a freshman D lineman that everyone is loving on over there in Lincoln Nebraska I think if you add another real option to this defensive front it could be one of the best in the entire country and when you have MJ Sherman coming off one edge if you can have a really talented freshman coming off the other you could have a lot of fun rushing the pass with this upcoming year in Lincoln so a good sign for them not only in this year but going forward maybe he doesn't have a huge contribution this upcoming year but maybe he's a guy you have to worry about when MJ Sherman Sherman walks out the door this guy steps right in and plays big time uh, football but let's move over to Notre Dame where they had some not so great news uh Charles uh J Jagusa excuse me Charles Jagusa was uh announced that he had a upper body injury I believe a pectoral injury where he will miss the entirety of the 2024 season that puts them in a really tough spot. Tosh Baker and Emil Wagner are going to be in the mix for that left tackle. The other one's going to play right tackle. So that's kind of where they're at, at the tackle positions. They were not necessarily at a great spot going into camp. It just got a little bit tougher. Emil Wagner is playing some really good football during camp and someone that they're going to have to see continue to grow. But regardless, you pretty much got two guys that you're going to be starting at one of those positions. Who's ever the better one is going to be at left tackle. Whoever the worst one is, is going to be at right tackle. And every other team knows that. So it's going to be one of those things that could define Notre Dame's se uh, season this upcoming year. And we'll see how big of a deal it is. But a couple other players just got a ton more on their table in Tosh Baker and Emil Wagner. But... Let's talk about the outside because the wide receiver group has not been great over the last couple of years in Notre Dame. It sounds like it's coming along. They added guys like Bo Collins, who was a really good player at uh, Clemson a year ago. Chris Mitchell is the biggest addition on the outside. But Jaden Thomas is the one that is making the most noise in fall camp thus far. I think you add him to Bo, uh, to Bo Collins, to Chris Mitchell, to Jaden Greathouse. I think you have a really fun wide receiver group there. And then Jeremiah Love and then Mitchell Evans catching the ball as well. You have plenty of offensive weapons where as long as you can protect the quarterback, you'll be more than fine. And then that defensive front is doing exactly what you expect them to do. Luke Tollick is someone on the back end of that defense that is making some big time noise, a very lengthy, long guy that can might end up playing this upcoming year, especially with a couple of injuries in that back end. So something to watch there. Let's move forward to Georgia here though. And let's talk about Warren Brinson and Jordan Hall first. Both of them are nursing injuries and both are very talented defensive tackles that will likely need to play at some point this upcoming season, and Warren Brinson will likely need to start that first week, so they'll have to get him up to speed pretty quickly. Also, Jared Wilson, the starting center, is out with an injury as of right now, but not really sure what the story is there. It sounded like he was nursing an injury last or throughout spring, but he had gotten healthy and was back on the field. Now he's not again, so not really sure what's going on there. Definitely will give you updates as we hear more. Another thing that's kind of happening is... The star player is not necessarily playing the level of football that Kirby Smart wants. Uh, I think that nickel uh, back we talked about yesterday, Johnny Loguero, the guy in that picture right there, he's likely going to be the starter there. They need more out of him, apparently. Uh, apparently, he is not playing that position to Kirby Smart's liking. Frankly, Kirby Smart has very, very high uh, standards for his team, but it doesn't change that they have could have real problems there, and it's someone that has to hit. They need someone at that nickel corner that is the glue of that entire back end, and if he's not getting enough from Johnny Laguero or from Ja'Cory Thomas, then 
they might not have an answer there and they might have an issue on their hands. But we'll see what happens there. Dalen Everett and Daniel Harris are the starting corners right now with the freshman in the two deep. So you'll see plenty of KJ Bolden and Ellis Robinson this upcoming year. And then on the outside, Colby Young is the one to watch. He's the one that is making the most noise. He's been making noise pretty much since spring ball. So uh, the Georgia fans absolutely love him right now. I think he's going to be a huge player for him, especially with Ra Ra Thomas getting dimiss- dismissed from the team. And then Nitro Tuggle is a freshman that has made a number of plays as well. This is just an outright speed guy. So you can just get him the ball and let him fly. And he's going to be a really fun player in time at UGA. I can promise you that. Over at Alabama, they love that defensive line. They feel like they have a really, really good defensive line on their hands. And frankly, when you have Jaheim Otis and JT Overton, or LT Overton, excuse me, you're going to have a really good defensive line. Um, they absolutely love it. Kalen DeBoer spoke really glowingly about that group, and they're going to have to be really good. If that back end is not necessarily going to be on the top level that it usually is, they're going to have to get to the quarterback and wreak havoc in other ways. So having that defensive front that's going to be really strong definitely helps them out a lot. Um, and then you have Zabian Brown. He's been making a lot of noise. We just talked about him a little bit earlier. He's going to have to have a huge fall camp. He's had a solid camp thus far. I think he still has a, a little bit of ways to go, but absolutely is someone that is doing everything that they're asking of him right now. And I think if you walked on the field and didn't know he was a freshman, you probably wouldn't guess he's a freshman right now. He's built very, very solidly and will absolutely be a player for this team. And then finally, you have Ryan Williams, someone that is showing a ton of talent at that wide receiver position. I think he's a very talented kid. I think if they do have to rely on him to be wide receiver one, they might have a little bit of problem. But overall, a very talented kid, someone that's definitely going to make some noise in this uh, offense and is making that known pretty early on. Tennessee has some injury trouble as well. Lance Hurd has been... uh, using a bulky knee brace on his left knee and did not take uh and did not take part excuse me in most of the drills for the offensive lineman if that's the case they have a little bit of problem at that left tackle position I do think he'll probably end up playing uh, by week one but they're gonna have to get that thing ready Dane Davis has taken over for him in the first group at that left tackle position but this is the guy this is the guy that they need healthy and if he's not healthy going into the season maybe they have a little bit of an issue on their hands And then the wide receiver group looks as ridiculous as it does on paper. Chris Brazel is really coming on and starting really strong. Dante Thornton is coming back from an injury and has had a really nice camp. Squirrel White's already there. Chaz Nimrod, Caleb Webb, Brew McCoy. It's ridiculous what this uh, offense has to throw at you. And it seems like everything is going according to plan as of right now. Over at Ole Miss, you have uh, Juice Wells, who came in from South Carolina, and there is some bad blood between him and the Gamecocks, it seems, which will be a very fun game this upcoming year, but it sounds like he's doing exactly what he did in the 2022 season, which was downright special. He is a really, really fun player, and if he can come along the way that Ole Miss fans expect him to and the way he is right now, they have two wide receiver, wide receiver ones on that roster in him and Trey Harris, so very much like this kid. I think it's a very talented kid that absolutely will make some noise. Some uh, injury news that was not so great, obviously not around Jackson Dart, although there was a apparently a rumor going around that he had a trouble with his ACL. He does not. He is more than fine and is absolutely dominating that defense, apparently, in uh, matchups. But Nate Kaleppo is someone that we uh, need to talk about. He is a transfer guard from Washington, and he is not playing as of right now. He is not in practice and has kind of been just a viewer uh, for most of the practices. And it sounds like he'll be fine. Sounds like it's not too big of an injury, but definitely something to watch again with an offensive line that just needs to come along and needs to be elite this upcoming year. Over at LSU, Sage Ryan is working at the cornerback position. He came in as a safety, and that's where a lot of people have put him, so some people are surprised. I tend to think cornerback is probably where he fits better, especially with the makeup of the rest of this team, so I do think this is probably the best decision, and we'll see what happens with him, but I tend to think corner is probably the place for him to be. And then the guy that's really showing out back there is Ashton Stamps. He has gotten a ton of really, really good reviews, playing really consistent, solid football, and that's exactly what this back end needs. They need a guy that when you see his number guarding someone, you feel pretty confident the ball is not going in that direction. So very much much like this kid, likely will be a starter on that back end and will be huge for them this upcoming season. And then not so much new news by any means. Kyron Lacey is a monster. He is absolutely dominating pretty 
pretty much everyone in that practice and will be a huge player for this team. He is going to be the outright wide receiver one by a pretty comfortable margin, if you ask me, and he might just be one of the best wide receivers in the country this upcoming year. So I do think he's going to be a monster, and he's showing that throughout fall camp. Now, you don't know what that means. Does that mean the back end is bad? Does that mean the wide receivers are awesome? I tend to lean more towards the wide receivers are awesome, but if last year shows us anything, it could definitely be the other one. So we'll see what happens there. Definitely a ton of more updates that we'll keep a lookout for in LSU camp, especially on that defensive side of the ball. But let's take our last break here, and when we come back, we're going to do some conference questions. We're going to bounce around to every conference throughout this week, but we're going to do the SEC first and just get out some questions I have for this upcoming uh, season. Maybe we'll do this a couple of times before the season starts, but let's do that right after this break, so stick with us.